Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews and I'm so excited to be here today with composer Andrew Scott Bell. He has worked on films such as Death Summer. He scored the 2022 uh, Fangoria Chainsaw Awards. And most recently he is the composer for the viral upcoming hit Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Hello, Andrew. Hello, it's so good to talk to you again. It's so good to talk to you. And you know, we, we shared last year uh the really cool b violin that was made yeah. for this which i know we have and we'll I talk know, about I, later I um it's so cool oh my gosh um music. it's just so cool so everyone there's a link so you can see more about that but we'll talk more about the b violin in a minute but i just first wanted to hear about how you first got involved with winnie the pooh blood and honey like how you got involved in the project yeah it's such a it's such a wild story i was just i finally just met recent person because he's from the uk and i'm from the us and we had the premiere uh of the movie in mexico city a couple of weeks ago which was a phenomenal whirlwind of of fun and you know joy getting to meet everybody and everything and i was talking you know trying to remember with reese talking about how we met and how it happened and it was um it was i think right around the time like days before the movie went massively viral and I think June, maybe, I don't remember. It was like announced in June or something or, or, or you guys discovered it on IMDb. I think, I think it was, yeah, we discovered, on IMDb. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you all discovered it on IMDb and it, it was like right around that time that um, people in the horror community in Los Angeles were like, kind of like, have you heard about this crazy, have you heard about the Winnie the Pooh horror movie? And it's like, no, this sounds so much, sounds like so much fun. So uh, I went on IMDb and I saw Reese Frake Waterfield and I looked him up on Instagram where he had posted a screenshot of a comment. This was like just starting to take off. Yeah. And people were either like intrigued or like laughing, like this is going to be so much fun or very angry and the the very angry people have stayed very angry they really have it's yeah. quite fascinating <laughs> to yeah, watch. it's it's a, it's a weird phenomenon we'll get into that a little bit later i think but he posted a, a comment on his instagram story that said like you're ruining my childhood and he said uh that's what i'm trying to do ruin people's childhoods and i just responded with um could I help you with that? You know, <laughs> like, let, let me help you or something like that. So. And, uh, and I think he saw that, and I didn't know this at the time, but he saw that the DP and I, the, the cinematographer and I were friends, Vince Knight. And so Reese said, this is the this is what I found out in Mexico when we were like talking about it. He sent a message to Reese and he said like, or Reese sent a message to Vince and he said, um, do you know this Andrew Scott Bell guy? And Vince just responded with, yes. So that's 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 how it happened. Sometimes the internet is a good place. Sometimes commenting on Instagrams in a nice way can get you things. That's kind of cool and wild yeah. to see that. You were just like, I might as well like see if I can get it. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's like you know, it's a social media is my theory on social media, and I'm we're gonna if we're gonna dive in, let me dive into this. I'll give the abridged version. At some point, you know, originally social media was marketed as like social the social network, even the name of the Fincher movie is social network. Yeah. And it was a place for people to connect. And at some point they realized that like people connecting wasn't good for business. And they rebranded all of them, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of them started to rebrand themselves and refer to themselves as social media as, and to in that like rebranding as social media as like a way of like everyone's their own, TV show, everyone's their own content creator. Yeah. Everyone's creating content for others to consume. Yeah. Like their own little like mini separate TV channels. Mm -hmm. And I think when that happened and when that shift happened in all of our minds, like we missed out on something. And I've tried really hard since then to to stay in the mindset that it's still social networking and you just use it to meet people. Yeah. And not like promote yourself. Yeah. Promote yourself through like interactions and connecting with people. And I think, you know, at least for creatives, that's been really rewarding to me. Like people are like, you're really good at social media. And I'm like, it's because I don't treat it like social media. I treat it like a giant networking room where I get to meet fun and exciting, cool people like Reese or Vince. 
Yeah. Well, and like, yeah. I was going to say, you use TikTok really well. And I think what you do so well is like showing people how you do your thing and show off the really cool craft, especially with the B violin and things like that. It's really yeah, interesting how you. you use it. And I actually, let's talk a little bit about the, v, the B violin yeah, and like how you, that. um, I know we've talked about it before, but if, for new viewers, can you just give a little bit of background about what exactly this incredible creation is and how it works with Winnie the Pooh? <laughs> yeah, um, it's pretty wild. It's a fun story. So when I so very soon after I signed on with Reese and the team, yeah, I was just like thinking about like what what am I gonna do? How am I gonna? You know, I'm always trying to find a way in for my music, and then the music. Yeah you know, like doesn't, is it doesn't like, isn't tied to that necessarily, but sometimes it's as easy as like, oh, what, what would drums sound like underwater or something like that? And then mm -hmm. you start to come up with a sound of like how to bury percussion and make it sound like it's muted and underwater. And then from there, all these other ideas like spill out for the rest of the soundtrack. So I'm always thinking about that stuff. And I, and I just out of the blue remembered an article that I read uh, in the New Yorker about an experimental luthier. A luthier is somebody who builds string instruments, like guitars, violins, cellos. And his, the, the part of the experimentation that he does is like, he takes violins apart. He finds them, first of all, like if they're already broken or like they're student violins, like he's not taking apart like very expensive historical instruments. Yeah. He's, he's finding like the vagabonds, the lost instruments that like people don't want anymore that he buys at like a, you know, a thrift shop for a hundred yeah. bucks or something. Um, and he'll like cut it in half or like, like what would a violin sound like if I put the, the neck on the bottom, you know, like, you know, just really simple things. Like what if I, what would a violin sound like if I took all the varnish off, you know, like I'm just experimenting. His whole mindset is like the violin world is so stuffy and stuck in its own way as like this instrument has been perfect for hundreds of years and we can't improve upon it. And he's like, why not? You know, um, I love so that. Anyways, That's I, so I, I, cool. Like classical music is so gatekeepy. It's so cool to yes. just kind of hold up a middle finger to like that whole tradition and play with form in a really cool way. Try it. Why? Like why? Why not? Why, yeah. What would a violin sound? I think there's some innovation in violin making, like especially custom electric violins. People yeah. are doing some really cool things with like turtle shells. Um, and so there is some of that, but but like. If you went to his Instagram page, which is at Violin Torture, and scrolled through the comments, you would see so many people being like, this is sacrilegious, or like, how, oh, it's making my skin crawl that you're like putting a violin into a dishwasher, you know? <laughs> like, um, and, and that mindset is ingrained on violinists, you know, from yeah. the teachers and from where they went to school and this idea. So I really love that he's just like, breaking through the mold. And that's what I love about that article. That's why I followed him on Instagram in 2020 when I read that article. But I suddenly remembered one sentence in that article where he says, for example, I just put a violin inside of a beehive just to see what would happen or something like that. And so I went to his Instagram page and like was like scrolling through, scrolling through. And I went back to 2020 where he was doing it. He was like putting it in or something. And I messaged him on Instagram and I said, hey, you know, you don't really know me like, uh, or I guess we had maybe had some correspondence, but it was like, hey, Tyler, his name is Tyler Thackrave, by the way, if I hadn't said his name yet. Uh, hey, Tyler, whatever happened to that, that violin in the beehive? And he said, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> he had I, love I love artists. I love artists. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> He put it in there and then like forgot that it was still in there. He's like, I should check on that. And I was like, wait, you know, like don't check on it. I'll bring up, I'm going to drive up to San Francisco and like film it. Let's take it out together. Uh, and he was that like, video was on dread central slash Andrew shared it. If you want to see that full experience, it's super yeah. cool to watch them pull it out for the first time. It's a little, I've been, I've had some uh, criticism that it's a little bit long, but you know what? You can skip through. I don't care. You have scrub um, through for a reason. Yeah, scrub or play it at 1.5 speed or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but the, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna. I, you were still talking about. It. I was. I was curious about the sound and like how it has affected. Like the the honeycomb had affected the sound of the violin. That's a really cool question, and I didn't. 
you know, if, for me, I thought like, at first I thought it was going to be maybe just a gimmicky thing. And I was like, oh, great. I'm going to be playing a violin. It's going to be dripping with honey. It's going to be funny. It's part of, to me, it felt like part of that I would be playing with a little bit of the fun that this movie has, which is like, Winnie the Pooh covered in honey, killing people, you know, it seemed like, all right, well, I'll play a violin that's covered in honey and it'll be maybe like a cool story, but at least I'll get to like, in some way, even though I'm alone in my studio, I'll get to have fun with the crew who had fun making this movie by having fun myself. Hell yeah, um, I love that. But then when we pulled it out, first of all, we weren't expecting it to be like the way it is. So this is the, the square part, if you can see. Yeah. Is is the beehive frame? So yeah. beehives have like eight of these, you know, something like six yeah. Like in the in the box, they pull out those frames, right, where they right. build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And they're normally like totally covered in hives, right? Yeah. So not normally a violin inside of it. But we, <laughs> I, I don't think we were expecting them to build like around it, you know. I think we were just expecting it to be to have honey on it or something. But so they built the hive like around the the violin first of all. So that's why we decided to keep the frame as part of it instead of taking it all off and just having a violin dripping. Yeah. Green. So I can't put this under my neck like a normal violin yeah. because it's it's not really it doesn't really fit like that anymore. But then we also discovered that uh, and if if you watch the video you'll see it. Um, I'm talking to the viewers like if they go to Dread Central and watch the video I can maybe try to show like I don't know if you can see in there where let's just get the light or something. But there's actual honeycomb inside the violin. Okay, I was gonna ask if it's in the violin. Like, there's actually honeycomb in the violin. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's that video, so cool. It's just like it's it's honeycomb, or it's not honeycomb. It's sorry. There's a difference. Tyler will love this because he taught me this in this video. This is honeycomb. Okay. This is honeycomb. Okay. And then this is the um, this is the type of comb where they have the babies. Right? Oh, that's like, right. Okay, that's where the larva. Where it's darker, yeah, with the larva. Oh, so inside is all larva uh, comb. Whoa! Oh, it's like a little bee nursery. <laughs> it's so wild. That's so cool. And and that's when we started to get really excited about like, okay, well now what? Like, it's not just a violin anymore. It's filled with stuff. It yeah. Has, substance inside. Yeah, so like I organic thought, material inside. Of it. Yeah. And I, so I thought to myself, is it just going to be a, like a muted violin? Like, you know, like there's electric violins that don't, aren't hollow at all. They're just, yeah. I was like, is it going to sound like that? Cause you know, like it's, is it going to be like playing an electric guitar without plugging it in, you know, like okay. quieter. Um, but we, we put the neck back on, we attached the neck to the frame instead of the violin itself. Cause it oh, get okay. it there. Um, and I was, when I finally finished that, and put it all together and tighten the strings. Like I was delighted to find out that it sounds not like a violin and it doesn't sound normal. So I, I actually have something prepared. I'm going to play. <gasps> Please um, do. Uh, everyone, Andrew Scott Bell always comes prepared with cool clips of, of music. <laughs> it's the best. Okay. So here's just one violin. The one, one of the beehive violins, so one track, I think, uh, I can't remember which cue this comes from, but I just exported it. I just found it and exported it this morning. And then after that, I'm going to play the thing that is really delightful to me, which is when you start to layer them. So we'll hear one violin or one beehive violin. I call it the beehive violin. Beehive violin. Uh, and that's just one of them. So you can hear it solo. And then we'll hear five of them together. And it, I kid you not, I was delighted to discover that it sounds like to me bees swarming so i was gonna I say know. yeah we'll talk about that okay i'm gonna mute my mic just so that you're not hearing me breathing in the background or something <laughs> Thank you. 
Yep. That's bees. That's a beehive. Yeah, it sounds like swarming bees. It does sound like swarming bees. And so, I don't, I, I mean, it's in a the totally score, different instrument, right? Because in the score, you can hear that, like, a lot. Like, you have, again, like, the motif of the violin sounding like bees. And I know that that, you know, makes sense. But it's like, I am not super musically inclined. So if this is a weird description, it almost sounds like tinier. And, like, a, like it's like a more i don't know like creepier because violins can be creepy but the way like the combination of the sound sounds a little bit more sinister than the violins we sometimes hear in horror yeah no it does uh it does it sounds totally different it's it's like cool tinny is a good way to describe it maybe like more nasal yeah Ooh. yeah Yeah. nasal is a good way to that and it does sound like bees and like it's just cool to have that combination and just to know what the instrument you use is really cool on top of that because yeah yeah, the story is really awesome but then like even broader talking about the score the opening the like the title not the title the first track you have this like sweet kind of like winnie the pooh is a disney character like the disney kind of vibes and leans into and then like gets more sinister as it progresses but i wanted to kind of hear more about how you approached a score like this and like balancing the drama and even some crazy vocals in a couple of the tracks versus like playing with the idea of it being a fantastical like a Disney movie kind of inspiration getting inspiration from that yeah I definitely stayed very far away from Disney I don't yes. really want to make sure I say that out loud and get down on there but there's uh I think I think maybe like what I was going for with that opening track and even a couple of times later throughout mm-hmm. the film, throughout the soundtrack and throughout the film is like whimsy. Yeah. I think of those original A.A. Yeah. A. Mill stories and uh, actually a lot of the track names are straight up like chapter titles. I was going to say, quotes. I love of which, there's a couple that are like of which, of which, and they're very yeah. fun. It's like, it's cute in a shocking way for a yeah. B- horror movie <laughs> score i mean if there's one that's called in which piglet is entirely surrounded by water and that yes. is literally lifted from the book of course in the book he's uh he's he wakes up and he's in his house and it's raining and he can't get out because of all the rain and they have to go rescue him but in in this movie it's uh it's a little bit different <laughs> the water that he's surrounded by i think that's in the trailer so people will recognize the pool scene that's the pool scene <laughs> <laughs> oh i love that that's <laughs> So he is entirely surrounded by water in an entirely different way. But uh, essentially, the like, you know, I, I mean, I love those original stories. They're so sweet and cute. Yeah. And they have a bit of whimsy. They have a bit of childlike wonder that I wanted to grab in the opening, you know, of this soundtrack, which in a, I don't know if it's, I don't think, I personally don't think it's Tim Burton-y, but I've seen people describe it as like a, this is, oh, interesting. What if Tim Burton made a Winnie the Pooh movie? And that's what people have responded to. Oh, interesting. It just sounds like Winnie the Pooh walking to me. <laughs> yeah. There's. Where is this? Oh, I'll have to. So, just, I don't know. Maybe this won't make the cut. You can cut this if you want, but I'm delighted by it. I, I, there's this theory that's never been proven that um, John Williams, when he writes his themes, like sings the words of the movie or like the character. Have you heard that theory? Which no, like, I never have. Da da Superman, and you know that dun 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 dun, like sounds like Superman. Oh. Or Star Wars, da 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 Star Wars, you know. I, who knows if it's true or if it's just fans like having fun, but I had a little bit of fun in that when, and let's see. Do you hear what I'm, what I, the poo. Yes, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you hear that theme like throughout the movie yeah. and that's Winnie the Pooh when he first comes on screen. I love that. I love, I thought that was a little fun. That is real. So when you were starting this, did you associate a certain instrument with Winnie the Pooh and or Piglet? Was there like one instrument you kind of thought of when you thought of that character? Well, not just, well, our version of the characters. Yes. Because they are 
they have grown. And I think when people see the movie, if they pay close attention in the, in the opening during the voiceover, they'll see a little bit of a clue as to where the rest of the movies, like the next one is going to go. Okay. Um, it's fun. But they're not, you know, I'll say they're not stuffed animals, you know, yeah. um, not like the original. That's a little twist on what we're doing. So the, the essentially the, the, the um, adult version of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet are massive. They're huge. They're, yeah. You know, encroaching and, and, and they're juggernauts with like Pooh has this unbelievable strength that, that is like he can like push a car, you know. Um, so when I thought of Pooh, I thought I want I mean, I've always been I've always wanted to try something like this. But um, when you first see Pooh as the adult version of Pooh, uh, it is like what I did is I recorded. I'm always trying to find ways to work within a budget. So I couldn't hire 26 cello players, but I could play the, the myself, the cello, 26 times to achieve a similar sound. And so the Pooh kind of like horror theme when he shows up and is like smashing things or pushing cars or like slapping somebody's literal skin off or, you know, whatever. Uh, the Pooh, that strength, that power is represented by 26 or 24 cellos, which is three times larger than a normal cello section in a traditional orchestra. And that's, My God. You've you've heard it. You hear it throughout the score, so you've yeah. Listened, so you know. Okay. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cello. That's twenty four of me. Like, I was gonna ask if you had worked with an orchestra, because again, like with those moments, that it sounds like an orchestra because there's so many cellos. But though that's you individually playing those parts and layering it on top of each other. That's me just going, uh, uh and then you know playing the whole scene wow. twenty four times. You know? Holy cow. That's so it, that's wild. Yeah, thank you. Because it sounds like an orchestra. <laughs> yeah, well, that was, I I I don't I never wish for like, you know, it's just like filmmakers. I think composers need to be filmmakers in our own way, which is yeah, like when George Lucas or in this case, like Reese Frank Waterfield and Vince Knight, the cinematographer, when they're when they're uh, confronted with the limited budget, which this movie has, or just like how do I show. Um, an alien, you know, like in the example of like Star Wars, or like, how do I show a hovering car, you know, without CGI back in the 70s? Like we, I think filmmakers find ways to creatively get our vision across. And I never want a lack of, I never want a lack of money to show up in, in the way my music sounds. Yeah. That makes sense. So if it just, it just takes me longer to play all the parts myself. I'll play all the parts myself because I want, I don't want to, um, I don't want it to affect the the person sitting in the audience to go, oh, this, this doesn't sound like he hired a real orchestra. I still yeah. want them to feel that power in their chest of yeah. a real human playing 24 instruments and pushing all that air with sound, like really actually pushing that air with their instrument, you know? Yeah. Well, and again, like horror scores can make or break a horror, a movie. I feel like we see that a lot. So, and especially in a film with a lower budget like this, and that is a silly concept. I think the score is really bombastic in a way that makes it feel a little bit more serious, but also playful, but like, mm. you know, it has that impact, I think, especially mm. with these like, like the, the string parts is really stuck out to me as I was listening to the score. Yeah, thank you. I have I played a lot of the violin parts. Um, I played a ton of the cello parts. I played a couple of the clarin. There's a clarinet solo in one of the cues that I played. There's some trumpet parts that I played. Um, oh, there's a there's another instrument that I don't think we've talked about that Tyler, who made the beehive violin, made custom for me. It's like there's no other instrument like. This I was gonna violin. ask if you. I know you use weird instruments, so I was gonna ask if there was another instrument that you like had like a, a unique instrument that you use that wasn't yeah. the violin. The well, because because I used it on this movie, I call it the bear head. So <laughs> let me let me get it. I'll show it to you, and then I'll play. Okay. The clip that I have. So, so hold it. Give it. Okay. So. Okay. Oh. Well, okay. Okay, so right now it only has one string on it because I broke two of the strings playing the soundtrack for me. 
But <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a ukulele bass neck. Okay. A cigar box body. This is a paint can lid as a resonator. Okay. This is um, the this is a violin neck, like a student violin neck, maybe. Okay. And it has like uh, what's called sympathetic strings. So as I bow this string, these strings resonate and cause harmonics like floating above. Just like you know, you don't play them; they're just they're just vibrating sympathetically to me playing. This oh, string. okay, okay. <laughs> and then inside, you can't see, but inside are rows of springs. Oh, so that when you plug it in, the signal goes through the 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 plug, and then through the springs, and it's called a that's called like a spring box reverb. Okay, like a lot of guitar amps will have like spring reverbs, and um, yeah, like there's another thing like you can you can put like a shaker or something. You can attach something to this so that the signal also can go through. Oh, whatever you attach it to, it's pretty fun. So this I is called a, you're this, calling this the bear head. I'm calling this the bear head. I mean, okay. I had, kind of had a couple of different names for it, but I'm calling this the bear head because it really was useful with the cello stuff too, like layering. It has this really, because of the springs, it has this really long reverb tail. So like you can, where'd I put my bow? I mean, you won't hear it because it's pretty quiet unless I plug it in. Okay. But I will play, I have a sample like prepared because as you say, Andrew Scott Bell comes prepared. <laughs> here, like. So you, you so you play it like that, like oh. Can you hear that? I can't I can't tell if you can hear it. I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, so that's it like acoustic, which is pretty wild, but when it goes through when you plug it in and it goes through the springs, it it has this like really long you play one note like that and just let it resonate and it just like sits there like like resonating Ooh. with the harm. The harmonics and this is the only one that exists right now the only one version of that instrument there's only one of them in the world wow. and i'm delighted that he made it for me and i just kind of you know i told him about the cellos and you know like he, he was like let's make something that you can like add to that oh and God. here it is here's what it sounds like all plugged in uh <laughs> But I can kind of, I can hear the little bit of the sympathetic, like the sympathetic kind of harmony, like over top. Yeah. Again, it sounds like, it, just it like does sound like above. multiple instruments to me. It doesn't sound like just one. Yeah. No, that's just one of me. And it's, I think the only thing that I have on this, on that little sample is a little bit of reverb, but most wow. of that reverb, most of that, like what we call reverb tail, which is like how it floats after you're done playing. Yeah. So that is in the springs that are inside that box. That's incredible. It's so cool to just hear all of the work that goes into a horror score and like the innovativeness going on, like yeah. not just in like right in front of your like face that you can see, but how it just creates such a cool experience orally, orally, you know? orally. <laughs> sonically yeah. better and way. How but... We can, you know, play with your expectations and, you know, yeah. give you chills. And it's just, it's a fun genre to play. It's a fun sand, but I always, I keep, I always say it's a fun sandbox to play in because um, at least was my experience with Reese and a lot of people that I work with, like nobody, not many people like tell me no. They all say, that sounds interesting. Let's hear it. You know, like no one's like, like, hey, I, I've, I've created this custom instrument and I want to use it. Nobody goes, no, nah, I, don't, I don't know. That doesn't sound cool. You know, it's like, they're like, oh, yeah, OK, let's hear it. And then and then often they're like, let's turn that up, you know, so <laughs> it's That's fun. Amazing. It's a really fun sandbox. Lots of fun tools and to play with. So before we sign off, do you have any projects that you're working on that are coming up that you can share Some other way? And then also, how can people listen outside of the film, listen to your incredible score for Winnie the Pooh? 
Yeah, I well, let's answer that. I'll answer that one first. Um, we're okay. releasing the soundtrack um, on February fifteenth on all music streaming platforms. Cool. Um, and on that, you'll also hear, similar to the cello, you'll hear myself singing Latin chants. Oh, that's you! That's I was going to say, the, love, like, is it blood? Are you saying blood and honey in Latin? Yeah, it's in Latin. It's um, sanguis et mel, which is Okay, I was like, that's Spanish. blood. Yeah. So you must sanguis be thinking. <laughs> et mel, here. Sanguis. That's me. That's you! It's me like 18 times, I think. Sanguis. And it's all throughout the soundtrack. It I is. I love it. And there's this particular track where it really kicks in. And I was like, oh my God, are they chanting blood and honey in Latin? Like an incredible oh, yeah, yeah. touch. <laughs> and it's you. just you. So. Yeah, I said, that was another one of those moments where I said, hey, Reese, I have this idea. And he, he said to me, it sounds expensive. And I was like, no, don't worry. It's... But no, I can do it like 45 like, times. <laughs> yeah, I'll just sing like 18 times versions of me in different voices and you know sing all the parts and we'll have like a it's this crazy male choir you know sound that's so like cool. very wow you are like a, a one-man band here one you man gotta, you know what? when you have to be when i have to be i mean the but that's right i mean it's like let's find a way to make i just never want the people in the audience sitting in the seats you know or or at the film festival or at home with their popcorn i never want them to go to be taken out of the moment. And so yeah. I, I never want, a, you know, there's always ways for me to make music on limited resources. And uh, and it's actually kind of fun that way. I mean, you know, I'm not the best violinist. So I think it almost on accident, it's like created a style for me that people seek out, which I'm very blessed and honored by. Cool. That, you know, my music has this sound that nobody else can really have because nobody plays the violin. I mean, I mean, anybody plays the violin like me because I'm just like sawing at it. But uh, you know, it's it's me playing, yeah. so it's it's hard yeah. to it's hard to I don't know. It becomes a sound of mine, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah, but yeah. Thanks. Um, the answer to your question is that the soundtrack comes out February 15th on all music streaming platforms. February 8th, I think it goes on iTunes for like a pre-sale, and if you buy it during that pre-sale week, you'll get like the first track. Uh, early cool. to listen to and prep, get ready for the movie. Yeah, prep for uh, the movie. Prep. And that first track is really fun. Like you said, it's a whimsy, whimsical, and like it's before things go downhill. Uh, so yeah, that's coming out there. I think there's a, there's some plans for a deluxe edition of the on a CD where we're gonna have some bonus tracks. Cool. And me playing these instruments and talking about them so that. When you listen to the whole CD, you can go back and listen. Oh, cool. And, like, listen for those instruments now that you've heard them alone, just like what we just did. Cool. Um, and there is talks and negotiations going on for a vinyl release, which is a tremendous honor for me. So I've never had one of my soundtracks released on vinyl, so this will be the first. And I'm very uh, delighted and honored by that, like. It feels like a milestone. It's cool. Fingers crossed. Oh my God. Incredible. Oh, it's happening. We just have to, you know, all yeah. this stuff is, yeah. But it won't be, it'll be because of the vinyl and uh, maybe this is like boring for an interview, but there's like, uh, what is it? Like back order issues. Or uh, oh yeah. For vinyl, the actual substance of vinyl. So it's like, this will be like in the fall or something like that, you know, just in time for Halloween or something. So. Hell yeah. Cool. And then do you have any project, other projects coming up that you can tease or share? I just did. Well, I do, but I can't talk about it yet. There's another movie coming that is waiting to finish the edit and then they're going to send it to me and I'll start that probably in like cool. a week or two. Uh, but not, the ink isn't dry on that yet. So it okay. still could who, that, you know, very superstitious. So I'm not going to tell anybody about that. Fair enough. But I do have... Speaking of being a one man band, I didn't, I don't always have to be. And I did this really wonderful short film for a guy named Charles Burleps that is called the Hanover incident. And it's like ET meets, uh, your favorite, I don't even know ET meets true detective or something. I don't even know. It's like really, Oh, weird. oh cool. It is. ET is my favorite. Um, <laughs> and we got to hire a live orchestra and. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
So oh, awesome. We, okay. We recorded that a couple of weeks ago, and I just can't wait for that movie to come out and start playing film festivals. You know, it's not, it's a short film, but it's just a delightful, fun, like, adventure horror short film. And I love that I got to. Um, Amazing. I got to use a little bit of my family, you know, John Williams love, you know, and uh, mix that with my horror love and together. So Amazing. thanks for asking. Of course. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for talking about the score and showing me all of the cool instruments and playing samples of them. This has been so cool. And everyone will have links for you to pre-order and listen to the score, which as we said, comes out on the 15th, which is when the film hits theaters. So yeah. make sure to go see it. Make sure to listen. Um, and thank you again, Andrew. This has been delightful. Thank you. So much fun. <laughs>